Hey, it's Jared with Gear & Light. Today we're gonna compare the Sony A7R4, the A7S III, and the A7 III. Now, these are the best cameras that Sony really has to offer right now. Of course, there is the A1 that just came out. Maybe there will be a A7 IV that'll come out sooner or later. There's always new versions of cameras coming out. But in a more affordable price range, uh, which can be argued, uh, these are the best cameras that are available, especially from Sony. I always get asked what cameras are, are better, which one's better for which situation. And this video, I'm going to attempt to answer those questions by giving you details about the cameras and then talking about uh, how I feel about the different cameras and how I use them. I own all three of the cameras. I have the A7 III right here, the A7R4, and I am looking directly into the A7S III right now. All three of these cameras serve purposes for me. I don't necessarily need to have all of them, but when I do shoot events and I'm out doing professional work, I like having the range that these cameras provide because I tend to hybrid shoot quite often, shooting both photo and video. So uh, the cameras, yes, fragmented, I think Sony is kind of becoming because the number system of these cameras isn't lining up anymore. They're coming out with so many new versions of cameras, it's becoming kind of hard to figure out which one fits best for your needs. So we're gonna talk about that here. Definitely use the timestamps down in the description below to jump around. If you feel like you wanna to skip to the next section or something like that, this video may get a little long, so I wanna apologize for that. The timestamps are definitely going to help you get through this video. I wanna make sure you get to the end of the video because I'm gonna talk about what camera is right for you based on your needs and even give you some tips on choosing which one to choose uh, at the end of the video. So make sure to watch all the way through, give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. So links are also in the description. One of the cool things about buying these cameras from something like Amazon is that you help support the channel here by purchasing with an affiliate click. Uh, but with Amazon, you know, they also offer financing and you get uh, really good financing or if you don't need the financing, you get up to 5% cash back, uh, which I tend to use quite often because we're all using Amazon for a lot of things, so that works. So let's talk about what these cameras all have. Now they're all pretty much best in class based on their price point and their comparable cameras from other manufacturers. It's really hard to beat a Sony camera, whether you're on the uh, lower end of the spectrum in price of full frame cameras with the a7 III or on the higher end of the price spectrum for photography with the a7R or even with the a7 S that I'm looking into right now. All these cameras are the best full frames that Sony has to offer in the A7 kind of mid-price range. Of course, the A1 is coming out as well. That's a whole different class of camera now. But as far as the A7 line goes, this is what we have. They all have dual card slots. They all uh, shoot superior low light. Uh, I mean, they are best in low light uh, regardless of what one you're looking at. It's hard to beat. Nikon can't really touch it. Canon can't really touch it. Low light performance, you go to Sony still. That's what made me move to Sony from Canon many years ago was the low light performance and they all have that. Great price for performance as well. There are a lot of competitor cameras coming out. Uh, you know, everybody's trying to catch up to like what Sony's been able to achieve with mirrorless. Best price for performance still with Sony. Of course, that's changing depending on what cameras you look at. Canon's definitely got a lot of nice stuff on the market and Nikon is, is there, but they're still kind of grasping and trying to figure out how they fit into the mirrorless market as well. Things are definitely changing, but good price for performance. Eye autofocus is also fantastic on all these cameras and they support it. They all have internal body stabilization or IBIS and great autofocus sensitivity in, in most scenarios. Autofocus sensitivity is important because if you're in lower light situation and your camera is struggling to maintain autofocus or, or grab autofocus, that's a frustration and all these cameras do great at it. They all take the uh, the bigger new style uh, battery, so great battery life out of all of these cameras, and um, most of them have unlimited recording time, not all of them, uh, and, and that does depend on your operating temperature and stuff like that, but they all do pretty good. 
So let's start out with the Sony A7R4 and talk about some of the features of it and what makes it stand out. Now, this is a 61 megapixel camera. That's a huge image. That's 9,504 by 6,336 pixels. That's a massive image. 567 point phase, 425 point contrast detection AF points. Um, this camera is fantastic at grabbing autofocus on pretty much anything you point it at. It has decent ISO performance uh, with 32,000 ISO native and 102,400 expanded. So great ISO uh, sensitivity with this camera, especially considering the large image that it is producing. You can continue to shoot it up to 10 frames per second uh, full resolution JPEGs. Um, that seems to be kind of an endless thing until you run out of space or buffer on your cards. And it does shoot uh, up to 4K 30p for those of you that uh, hybrid shoot and need to shoot in video. So some of the cons about this camera, the 61 megapixel image is massive, and I love that about it, but not all the time do I need a 61 megapixel image. And when I want to shoot a smaller image, I don't have, you don't really have any options for a smaller raw image. You can have a compressed raw image, but you can't go with a lower resolution raw image. So you're getting a massive image out of this camera, regardless of whether you need it or not. But that's why we bought it, so I guess it's not really a con. I just wish there were more settings available there. Um, SD card support only. It does not have support for um, uh, the CFast cards or the CF Express cards, I mean. And also the tilt-up screen only. No flippy screen, just the tilt-up screen. So let's move on to the A7S III, which I'm looking into right now. I'll make sure to show some B-roll of my A7S III setup so that you can see it. The 4K 120 is definitely a huge win there. I wish that somewhere in between of all this time we've had 4K 30 that we could have had some 4K 60, but I'm definitely not complaining about the fact that we have 4K 120 now. You also get up to 422 10-bit uh, recording directly in camera, which is great, produces some massive files, but it is fantastic to have that kind of support in the camera without needing any sort of external recorder. You definitely, if you're going to shoot at that rate, you're going to need a very fast SD card like a V90 or perhaps even a CF Express Type A card, but nonetheless, um, you're getting some fantastic capture out of that camera. Industry-leading ISO performance, that's what the A7S line has always been known for, with a native of 102,400 and an expanded of 409,600 sensitivity. That is insane, and this camera basically sees in the dark, which is why I love it. It's why I switched to Sony a long time ago when the A7S came out. I needed that low-light performance when I was shooting weddings, and nothing could come close to it, so I bought a Sony A7S and the rest is history. Sold all my Canon stuff, haven't looked back since, and have just enjoyed shooting on Sony. So the A7S III also has 759 phase, 425 con contrast detection points. Uh, it does have the superior autofocus out of all of these cameras. Um, it has a much smaller megapixel, which we'll talk about here in a second, the image that it produces. And uh, the way that the sensor is configured uh, and, and the processing and everything, this is why it can get so sensitive in the low light situations and also have uh, you know better autofocus. Um, the sensor is not having to capture massive images and so uh, we have a little bit of I guess give and take there in a sense but this camera is more for video shooters and that's why it captures at a lower resolution when it comes to photos. Uh, insane autofocus sensitivity and low light superior to both of the other cameras and superior to most other cameras on the market. The camera can kind of see in the dark because of the ISO sensitivity but it can also autofocus in near dark situations as well which is absolutely necessary if you are utilizing that high ISO to shoot in those situations. It does have a flippy screen on the back for those of you that have been wanting a flippy screen on a Sony camera for ages. I'll talk about that a little bit here in a few. Continuous shooting at 10 frames per second for up to 1000 raw images, which may be useful. Yes, it's only a 12.1 megapixel image, but it can shoot up to 1000 raw images uh, continuously, which is pretty fantastic. Just make sure you crop right and you'll be okay in camera. Arguably the best e 
EVF on the market as well. Uh, these all have pretty good EVFs and being that it's a mirrorless camera, one of the benefits is being able to shoot photos and see your preview back in the EVF, not having to look at the back of the screen, you know, kind of pulling it down. I think they call that chimping or something like that, looking at the image on the back of the screen. Um, I love the fact that I can look right into the EVF. Even when shooting with the A7S III, a lot of times, if I'm going with a more compact setup and not a built-out rig, I'm looking through the camera. Uh, being, I could even be really discreet about my video shooting because it looks like I'm taking photos, but I'm actually shooting video. And the EVF is such good quality. It's just a beautiful experience. And also is the back panel on the camera as well. Dual card slots with the CF Express Type A support in the A7S III, which is great because those cards are so fast. They are very expensive. That is a con to those cards. The price, of course, will come down over time, but right now those cards are pretty expensive. I purchased one and have used it in my camera here and there, but I've opted to go with the SD V90 cards instead because I can get a lot more of them for the price, and I'm running those in all of my cameras now because every now and then, I'd say every couple of years, I, I, I get rid of my old cards and I bring new cards in so that way I'm not using cards to the point of failure. And uh, so every couple of years, maybe year and a half or two, I will upgrade my cards. So now I'm using all V90 cards. I'll make sure to link to that down in the description below. So what are the cons of the A7S III? Well, the 12.1 megapixel could be one of them. If you're wanting to use this as a photography camera as well, you're definitely going to have to crop in on your image uh, by using your feet or using your zoom lens and getting that right in camera because you're not going to have a whole lot of real estate otherwise. A 12.1 megapixel image is still pretty good. That's 4240 by 2832. That's a decent size image, probably big enough for most things, but you're not going to have that extra room to crop in should you need to crop or resize that image uh, like you would with one of these other cameras. So the flippy screen, to me, I don't really care so much about the flippy screen. I like the tilt screen because when I'm holding a camera and I'm looking at the screen, I want to look at the same kind of angle, I guess, that I, I want to look through the camera. The, in the same way that our EVF is direct center, when I'm looking through the camera, it's like I'm looking straight through the lens and everything just lines up. When you have this flip screen out here, I just don't like that. I know I could flip the screen around and look at it flat, but then if I want to hold the camera down, I can't tilt, I can't tilt the screen up unless it's flipped out to the side of the camera. To me, that's a frustration. I know to some people it's not a big deal. And shooting on the A7S III, I typically have monitors attached to that and I'm not using that screen for, for much of anything other than just camera settings. So it's not as big of a deal for me. If the flippy screen comes to these cameras, then I may be a little bit more frustrated. It is definitely a thing that you either like or you dislike. For me, I would rather have the flip up screen than the flippy out screen. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. We can argue about it down in the comment section below. Uh, so let's talk about the A7 III. Now this camera is awesome and I've used the, I've used this camera near to its death. I'm sure it is getting a little long in the tooth because I've used this camera for a lot of years now. It's been around for a while. It shoots uh, great images. Um, the price for performance is kind of unmatched out there. Even today, many years later after this camera has been released, it still just shoots fantastic images. It shoots a 24.2 megapixel image at 6,000 by 4,000, which is a great size of an image. It's not too small, it's not too big. And so I, I definitely like the image that comes out of this camera. It has 639 phase, 425 contrast detection autofocus points. This camera does a great job at achieving autofocus, even though it came out several years ago and technology has advanced, it still does a great job. It holds its own against the A7R4 and uh, I, I, the A7S III definitely beats it in autofocus, but this camera, it's, it's just great. Autofocus is great. It has great ISO performance too with 51,200 native and up to 204,800 expanded sensitivity. 
The low light uh, performance on this camera is great, both for photos and for video. Of course, it doesn't beat the A7S III, but it beats out anything and everything that it is in or around its price point still today, even multiple years later. Continuous shooting at up to 10 frames per second. It'll do 89 raw full resolution images um, estimated, uh, depending on your camera settings. Um, and, and, and that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, if you're shooting continuous, if you're shooting sports, you definitely want that. You want that high continuous rate. Uh, and it does shoot a bit faster than the A7R4 because the A7R4 is producing pretty large raw images. And so you want to make sure that you have fast SD cards if you're going to be shooting continuously on the A7R4, even with this camera as well, but it's not as important as it would be on a higher resolution camera. Uh, shoots 4K up to 30p, which is great. Uh, I wish it went to maybe 60 or something like that, but 4K 30p has gotten me by for a lot of years, and I'm not going to complain about that at all. If you want a, a bit better of an image, you can go to an external recorder and get 8-bit 422, which is great, and you can still shoot 4K 30 out to your external device. Most of the videos that you have watched on this channel uh, or on my other channel, State of Tech, over the years have been shot on this camera attached to an Atomos Ninja 5 or Ninja V, whatever you want to call it. And it produces beautiful, beautiful video even after it's been ran through the YouTube ringer. It still looks great. I get comments all the time. What, what did you use to shoot this video? It's this camera. And in my old setup, it was an 85 millimeter G Master lens uh, or a 24 to 70 G Master lens. Fantastic, fantastic video quality out of this camera. It does have a recording limit of 29 minutes. Now we're getting into some of the cons or maybe, you know, 30 minutes or whatnot. So it does have a recording limit. It has the tilt screen, no flippy screen, uh, just the tilt up screen. And it is getting a little bit old. It was released in April of 2018. It is almost April of 2021. So make sure to subscribe to the channel here because one of my next videos coming up uh, at the beginning of next month will be my review of this camera three days later and comparing it more to what is out uh, and what is in and around the price range that's come out since then. Is it still a good buy three years later even though it's getting quite old now? So let's talk about pricing. Pricing is huge. Pricing determines what you can afford and then also what you can afford after you buy the camera. Uh, the Sony a7R4 is 3000 to 3500 depending on what kind of deals are going on. I know right now the camera is $2999, uh, but it probably will go back up to 3500 so you'll definitely want to check the links in the description below to see the deals that are going on. This camera does vary in price, you know, that, that kind of $500 bouncing uh, range where the a7s3 is 3500 and so far there hasn't been really any deals on the camera sometimes there are bundle deals but 3500 dollars is what you can expect now the sony a7 III on the other hand is currently 1700 dollars or 1699 and it normally is about two thousand dollars uh, so the deals that are going on right now, obviously because the camera is a little bit older, but boy, that's a great price for that camera. You really can't beat uh, that price point for the camera. So what Sony camera do you pick? I know I rattled off a lot of things. I talked about a lot of specs and threw in some thoughts here and there along the way. You know, the Sony a7R4 is best for photographers, and I wouldn't even just say a regular photographer, somebody who's just the uh, hobbyist photographer, but maybe somebody that's a little bit more of a professional photographer that wants higher resolution images. Uh, this camera would be the best for them. It does give you that flexibility, having that large image, meaning you've got plenty of room to crop in for most of the images that you're going to produce don't need to be 61 megapixels in size, and so lots of room to crop. This camera uh, just, you know, performs a little bit better in that range. So if you are a pro photographer with a photo primary purpose, then the a7R4 would definitely be for you. With that insane resolution, you can crop in on all the things. So with the a7S III, of course, best for video shooters who want the best in class video while still having the ability to shoot photos. That is kind of, um, I guess, a unique uh, feature there because there are so many uh, Sony cinema cameras now coming out with the FS3, the FS4, 
six, the seven, the nine, like there's so many different options, like there's, there's that. But still, as far as photography goes, the A7S III still produces fantastic images. Even though it's primarily a video shooting camera in a photo camera's body, it still shoots fantastic images. 12.1 megapixel is a, a decent size image so long as you crop in appropriately when you take the picture and you don't have to do any of that in post-production. The Sony A7 III, though, is best price for performance of all of these cameras. Now, this camera, of course, might not fit your needs depending on what you're looking for, but most of the people that are watching YouTube videos, uh, maybe even they want to shoot YouTube videos, they want to grab photos of things that are happening around them, you're not a professional, or maybe you even are a professional, but you want something that is really good for hybrid shooting, the a7 III is fantastic camera, even though it is getting a little old. So, conclusion, here are some of my thoughts. Don't overspend on a camera. It's easy to do that. It's easy to buy more camera than you need. Uh, it's easy to say, oh, well, I'm gonna be shooting video, so I want the a7S III. Well, that's a $3,500 camera. Are you going to be producing content that needs to be 4K 120 or 422 color space 10-bit? Um, I mean, those are great things, but do you really need that based on what you're doing? Is it a good enough uh, reason to sacrifice the small resolution and uh, of, of an image shooting photos and then paying more money? I don't know. I mean, that's totally your decision to make, but don't overspend and don't buy more camera than you need. Same goes with the A7R4, or maybe if you've even been lured in by the new A1. <laughs> These cameras are more expensive, and yes, they do provide some features that are really nice to have, but is it too much based on what it is that you're trying to do, where you can get by spending more on a lens, getting a nice lens like a G Master lens. I, if I had to choose, I didn't have anything and I had to choose, I would rather have an A7 III and a G Master lens. That is an ideal situation there. I mean, how good is 61 megapixels or 10-bit 422 color going to look if you're shooting with a kit lens? Really? I mean, think about that. More money on the lenses, great quality glass, your autofocus performance, everything is going to perform better with better quality glass and your sensor, which is a great sensor, doesn't matter what camera you get, is going to be able to capture better images because the glass that you're shooting through is premium. I definitely would rather spend more money on glass and get a camera that fits most of my needs that still is going to be a great camera in the next couple of years. Lastly, I mean, consider renting first. Um, you know, it might not make sense to rent because if you already know you're going to buy something, you're basically paying money to borrow something that you're going to buy anyways. But some of these cameras uh, you can rent for a really decent price, especially this camera. If maybe you're thinking, would the a7 III get me by? You can rent it and try it first. Or maybe you even know somebody that has one. Go shoot with it for a little bit first. If you're lucky enough to have a camera store nearby, go in and handle them and shoot around a little bit and just test them first before you invest all of that money. And lastly, if you don't know how to shoot in manual mode, definitely check out my free course called Ditch Auto, available in the link down below in the description. That course will teach you everything that you need to know to shoot in manual mode, which is going to be required to get the best quality image out of all of these cameras, giving you the most control, utilizing the features of these cameras to capture the best images possible. So that's going to do it for me. Check out the links in the description below to these cameras, including my list of camera lens, accessories, and stuff that I use for filming these videos. That can also be found below. If you have any questions, the comment section is open down below this video to ask questions. Or of course, you can join our Discord server where we talk about cameras and all this good stuff as well. That's a great way to chat ongoing and have a conversation that goes beyond just the comment response that uh, YouTube comments can produce. So definitely check that out as well. That's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for checking it out. I hope you come back for the next one and for my three-year review of the A7 III soon. But until then, take care, and we'll see you next time.